This video will explain the different techniques and styles used to complete a watercolor painting. There is quite a range of different materials that can be used for watercolor, but specifically for this video, the Arches Cold Press 140 pound paper will be used. This is a watercolor pad, which means that each page is attached to one another around the border and there is no need to tape down the paper. The Blick Artists watercolor in lemon yellow, ultramarine blue, and naphthol red will be used. Later on, cerulean blue and black. Other materials used are two water dishes, paint brushes, and a plate with a divot in the center for mixing. To create my color palette, I will put a little bit of red, yellow, and blue on the outside of the plate and in the middle start to add water. I'm going to create a dull down palette that will give me really beautiful transparent colors. First, I want to create the neutral color by mixing the red, yellow, and blue together. This step requires a little bit more trial and error because I don't want the neutral color I'm creating to lean towards any of the primaries. Once the neutral color is established, I will begin creating the rest of my palette by mixing red and yellow to create orange, yellow and blue to create green, and blue and red to create purple. Since these colors are pure, I will introduce the neutral color into the mix to dull them. I will repeat this step for all of the colors. Once the palette is created, I will begin with simple techniques. I will begin showing the dry technique. This is accomplished using minimal water on a paintbrush and on dry paper. For this exercise, I want to achieve many different shades of the same color, and to do that, a lot of water must be used. To dilute a color, adding water to a paintbrush or removing excess paint can provide with transparent like shades. With the dry technique, I am able to achieve hard and solid edges. This is useful when an object needs to stand out in a painting. The dry technique is also useful when layering colors to show depth in a painting. I will do this technique with all the colors I have created. I am both adding water to my colors as well as removing paint to create the transparent effect. With watercolor, it's always important to remember that the white of the paper plays a big role in how your colors will look. The next technique that will be shown is the wet on wet technique. This is achieved by applying clean water on the surface of the paper and applying paint while it is still wet. This allows for easier blending, a softer look, and prevents hard edges. It is important to work quickly, but also be free in your technique. The flow of the water can allow for very beautiful textures. Once the paper is dry, the technique can be repeated to build the color gradually and express different shapes. While these are two basic techniques, mixing them together allows for new and interesting textures as well. For example, on the right, I'm using excess water on the paintbrush on dry paper and slowly incorporating paint for more control. Moving on to the main piece, this is my reference photo for my painting. It is critical to have the reference photo nearby when painting. I'll start off with a quick sketch. The goal of this painting is not the realism. The quick sketch is to help me map out my colors and shapes based on the reference photo. I am splitting my reference photo into three parts. The grassy and road area on the bottom, the sunset with the warmer colors in the middle, and the big dark clouds at the top. The most detailed part of the painting will be toward the middle. Before I begin painting, I am also taking note of where the darker and lighter areas are going to be. The bottom of the painting will be my darkest point. The first thing I am going to do is create a very light wash over the entire page. I will be using a very wet brush with minimal paint on the dry paper. For this painting, I am also incorporating the cerulean blue to give it more depth. I'm using a lot of clean water to blend out the paint. I do not want any hard edges at first. I'm also keeping some white areas as these are more of the brighter spots. I will continue this process till the right colors are in the right places. I do not want to be intense with the colors right away. My goal is to gradually build them. The top of the painting will be mostly blues, the middle being oranges and red, with the bottom being greens, dark brown, and gray. To add more gray into the sky, I am incorporating the color orange. As for some color theory, mixing opposite colors on the wheel will create a neutral tone. Adding the opposite color on top of another will also create a darker effect. 
I'm also taking my brush with the orange and using the dry technique to show more solid edges in the warmer tones of the clouds. I want to have a smooth transition between the gray blue clouds and orange ones. To do so, I'm adding water on top of the dried area and blending them together. I'm also taking more of the water towards the bottom and spreading the orange color across the horizon. I will continue to add more blues and oranges till the blend looks natural. I want to begin adding more color as now I know where my colors are going to be. For the green areas, I added some darker strokes and then took a clean wet brush to blend it out. I will continue adding light washes over the entire painting as well as using the dry technique to create edges in some of the clouds. As the color intensifies, I want to start focusing on texture in the darker areas. For the trees and grassy area, I am going to place very loose strokes in a light brown color. I am also going to add some purple using the dry technique to the clouds to darken and create depth in that area. I am adding red to the center and blending it out using clean water. I will continue to intensify the painting by layering more and more of the same colors. For more texture, I am going to add a dark purple towards the center where the trees are located in the reference picture. I am also going to use shorter and smaller strokes towards the center and larger, more blended strokes towards the top to create a 3D look in the painting. Sometimes mistakes do happen where too much paint is added. To lift off the paint, I add more water and use a clean paper towel to dab it off. At this point, the colors are looking good. I am going to start to add detail in the trees by using a small thin brush and black watercolor. These trees will be watered down and fuzzy at first in order to create depth. The trees were starting to look too flat, so in order to bring some forward, I mixed a pure neon green and added those strokes to the trunk of the trees. I also brought that neon green color to the foreground of the painting. I did also add hints of black and red in the shape of a car in the road. I will continue to layer those colors till I get the desired look of the car. To continue adding detail, the intensity of the colors had to increase. I took a thin brush with black watercolor and painted a rough shape of a car. I then cleaned that brush and blended out the edges. I wanted the car to fit the loose style of the painting. I continued with the same brush and black watercolor to add stronger trees while the car shape dried. I added a variety of different sized trees with different intensities. I didn't want a pure black on all the trees, so I made sure to blend it out. Once the car shape was dry, I took my pure red and painted two little circles to show the car lights. At this point, there was a rough distinction between the trees and the grassy area. To create more flow, I added a dark brown wash over the green areas of the painting. I made a gradient from the trees all the way to the foreground with the dark brown and blended it out. The sunset needed to be more intense, so I added pure yellow at the center and blended it out with the rest of the background. The clouds in the center required more hard edges. I also wanted to incorporate more red. I took my thin brush and pure red and very carefully outlined the red clouds. I repeated this step with the blue and purple in the same area. Like the grass and the trees, there was a rough line between the red clouds and orange sunset. I did not add a wash to this area, but instead I took a pure orange and created small textures that blend with the red. It was too harsh at first, so I took a clean wet brush and slowly blended it out. I continued to define and darken the road by adding dark washes in certain areas surrounding it. I repeated the process of defining the edges at the top of the clouds as well as adding more washes to darken the area. As the last and final touch, I added two white dots in the road to show the car coming toward the viewer. At first, it was a little intense, so I used some paper towel to remove excess paint. I then used a clean wet brush to blend out the edges. This is the final painting. Overall, the colors and texture used create a well-balanced painting. With having larger clouds at the top of the page and having them get smaller as they go down created a depth effect really well. Thank you for watching this watercolor process. If you would like to see more, you can visit my website at fatimadava.com.
Thanks again.